yes, but back then, like, it wasn't really a thing to meditate, or um, at least it wasn't talked about openly. That's Mm -hmm. why... I'm trying to bring awareness to that because I think it's okay to talk about, you know, mental health and in, in sports especially, but life too. Um, everybody goes through something and not a lot of people talk about it because from the outside looking in, you think everybody's life is, oh, they're Instagram, they're this or that, but there's more to that. Um, so I just want to shed light on that uh, mental health. If you're happy mentally, I feel like you can achieve pretty much whatever your goal is. Joining me today is professional basketball player Tyler Harvey. Tyler went from walk-on at Eastern Washington to the nation's leading score at 23 points per game. He was drafted later that year in the second round of the NBA draft by the Orlando Magic. He has since played overseas and in the G League, and he just recently won the NBA Summer League with the Memphis Grizzlies. We tap into how he blocked out distractions to exceed all expectations. We discuss mental wellness and meditation. We go into his definition of flow. Finally, we tap into his peak performance where he dropped 58 points in one game. This is a deep tune in, and I hope you guys enjoy. This episode is sponsored by MindSport, the number one meditation app for athletes. Hello and welcome to The Flow Station. I'm your host, Will Ferris, and as always, the goal is to help you cultivate your unique flow by bringing on guests who have tapped into theirs. Speaking of someone who's tapped into theirs, I got my man Tyler Harvey in the building today. Thank you for coming on, bro. Yes, sir. Tyler is a absolute legend. Got to hoop with him at Eastern Washington one year. Uh, cooked me several times while I was a redshirt there. Humbled me deeply. But just to start off, what have you been into recently? Maybe some inner awareness that you've been tapping into and, and some current flows. Ah oh, man, it's been a lot going on lately. Uh, my month of July was pretty much filled. Um, I had summer league in Memphis for about a month. Um, we extended that because we went to the championship, obviously. So we we're there an extra week. Um, had a wedding right after that, um, and then right to the honeymoon, and now I'm back here. So July was pretty much filled with a lot of uh, a lot of different flows. Um, you know, you go from playing, and then you got relaxation with the new newly wife, and uh, yeah. So July's been really interesting. It's been a lot going on for me. Nice, man. So, I mean, I know you've said this story a bunch of times, but you went from not even having a Division One look. You were going to walk on a D three. You end up walking on to Division One and then becoming the leading scorer in the nation. Just talk about just your mental state. You know, in this current society, we have so much instant gratification and people want to perform, perform, perform and, and show off to all their friends. But you were able to just put your head head down and grind and, and really make your dreams come to reality. But what, what did that take, you know, in, in terms of patience and, and understanding that the process is greater than just the end result? Yeah, man, it's crazy. Like, now looking back on it, um, you know, we talk about flowing a a lot now. Um, I didn't even know kind of like what that was at the time. Um, You know, you're young. Um, I was was into psychology at a young age, but, like, I didn't know I was. You know Mm -hmm. what I mean? I knew about flow and all that stuff, but all I knew was hard work. Um, And that that's kind of like what separated me at at the college level was I'm going to work harder than you. And I know the end result would take care of itself. Back in college, I mean, I lived on the gun. I mean, I, after practice, for practice, like, I just shoot, 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 shoot. Um, you know, now I still, I mean, I try to outwork everybody, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, but I try to, like, plan it. I try to plan my workouts. Yeah. Like, you know, I'll go Tim Manson to straight to the gun. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Like, after this, I'm going to go shoot. Um, I try to, like, map out my flow and kind of, like, what I know I need. Um, back then, though, like, you know, when you're young, you're just trying to go, 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 go. Um, but now I try to take time to meditate. You know, stretch, mm. stretching's key. Um, I try to tap into different we- different realms to, you know, enhance me, my, my body, my mental side, um, things like that. But, you know, hard work is key. Um, I think that's what got me to this point. And I still, you know, I'm still trying to outwork the next guy. I mean, that's just who I am. I can't take that away. Um, but I am aware that you do need Mm. rest and you know your body is always going to tell you what you need it's a lot of hours of work man I mean nothing nothing given nothing's given to me has been easy I know I have to work for everything in my life and you know that I'm not as scared of that though like I'm not afraid of hard work yeah um so it excites me but um now I think I'm tapped into a different mental state than I was um now I'm aware of like flow and what I need to do and you know your body and you know all that kind of stuff but um coming up in college it was just, I'm going out, to outwork you, and I know something good will come out of that. Yeah, and I think there's there's always an adjustment period almost 
when, you know, obviously you're killing in college and you don't even have an awareness of what flow is. And then you tap into what flow is and you've experienced it and now you can put, you know, a name to it. But how difficult is that process to, you know, now you understand it intellectually. And then is it almost harder to tap into it because you know about it? Bro, it's, it's, that's a great question. I think now I'm, I'm more self-aware than I was. I'm aware of like, you know, thoughts and, you know, going down the wrong path. And, you know, if your thinking gets a little out of control, like becoming, you know, coming to center quicker than, than I would be able to. I mean, you would have those thoughts in college, but, uh, you know, like negative thoughts per se, say like, you know, have a good game, have a bad game, dwell on it. Mm. Um, now it's kind of just like, okay, it, it doesn't bother me, good game or bad game. It's like, I'm going to do whatever's next. Like, I'm just in that moment, and whatever the job is, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it. I mean, you're not going to be perfect. That's I think that's where a lot of people, uh, it's like fault. You want to be perfect in everything. You care what people think about you and being judged for playing bad or something like that. But I think I'm tapped into a place now where I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be me, and some days it's going to be good, some days it's not. But at the end of the day, I'm happy with myself. I think that's huge, and you know, just after a bad performance, just knowing it'll always come back, and you know, that's what you really learn in meditation is just to, you know, good or bad, you just it's how you come to the practice. Right. That was one thing I wanted to bring up. You know, I as I redshirted, I got to just watch you perform, and obviously just dominate a lot of games. And you know, there'd be times where coach would get on you, you like, Tyler, you got to start hitting shots, and I was like, man, how how does he keep this mental space where he keeps his confidence even when coach is on him? You know scouting reports are all on him he's, he's expected to score this many points just take me through just how you've been able to lock in no matter what even if you're not performing well um, what are you saying to yourself how does that meditation practice really show itself um, in the games and, and as you prepare for games yeah bro so back then um, you know I didn't really meditate I knew about meditation things like that but I really didn't for me back then it was just kind of like that quiet confidence that you know what you're capable of and mm. at any moment you could snap into that um I think now I look back on that and it's kind of what I was getting at when I didn't know I was getting at, but I actually was, was, you know, if you stay in that mental state of, you know, peace, calm, and, you know, eventually the tides will turn. Um, I think that's where flow happens. Um, so like, like I said, I was entering flow without even knowing what flow was. I was just out there playing my game. And, um, I think if you don't judge, if you don't worry about how people judge you, for your performance, I think that opens up a lot. Um, mm. I never had that fear in college. I didn't give a, I, I, we Can I cuss on this? Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> I'm, like, I didn't give a shit if I, you know, played bad or good. Like, I knew what I, I knew I put the work in, so I knew the results would come. Yeah. Um, not even cocky. It's just I know I put the work in, and I know what I was capable of. And, you know, good or bad, coach getting on you, coach not getting on you. You just got to stay calm and, and just keep at it. At a young age, my dad would tell me, basketball-wise, to, like, trust your mechanic. Um, and that kind of was instilled in me. So, you know, good or bad, I would just trust it. I mean, sometimes you could you could trust it and it just does, doesn't work out. Yeah. Like, I've had plenty of games like that where I'd, I'm shooting it, it feels great, and that thing will just airball or something. I'll be <laughs> like, all right, man, well, I'm still going to trust it. The game's not the place to fix it. Mm-hmm. Um, you start doing that and get in your head, it's, it's over. <laughs> so, I mean, I just try to be at ease with myself and trust myself, um, especially during game time. But if you're overanalyzing every miss or every make, and then that's a recipe for disaster. Yeah, I think that's some, you know, I really wish I tapped into more as I played in college, but, you know, your journey specifically, like you go from a guy who was going to go play Division three, and but you still maintain this confidence inside that, you know, I can play Division one, and then you end up, you know, leading the nation in scoring. Is that something you just had instilled in you at a young age, or was that just something that, you were able to develop just through that hard work. Honestly, bro, like I'm a spiritual guy, so I feel like God's always placed me in positions to to do what I'm supposed to be doing. Um, so I've always had that inner faith that it's mm-hmm. going to work out for me. I Sometimes you don't see how. You know, I look back now and the things happen the way they did for a reason. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's always been my rock is my faith. Um, so, you know, when things are going good, it's great. When things are going bad, I mean, you got to, take a step back and say all right bigger picture Mm -hmm. and uh, you know that things will work out in the long run you really started your journey at NAU Um, you had this crazy game you know just talk about that journey and then tie it into that confidence always being ready for your moment and always just you know grinding when you don't even see the end result and you just have that confidence there but just that story in general I think encompasses all of that in one right bro I remember um, coach legs would always tell me to stay ready and I just thought it was lip service at first, but I mean, it's true. You really do always got to stay ready. 
And I think that game is where I really tapped into flow and kind of like felt that it's, I mean, you've been in flow before. It's like a different kind of realm. You feel like everything's just going to go your way. That year, I mean, I think I played maybe two games, like towards the end of the game, whatever. So it was like our last eight games of the year. Um, I think we were down like 24, 25, like eight minutes left in the second half. So it's like, all right, scrubs go in and get, you know, whatever, get some burns. So I come in and like, I don't know, man, the ball just started finding me somehow. And I would just let that thing fly. Like, all right, whatever, we're, we're down by 20, whatever. So nothing can go wrong. So I just let it fly, bro. And I think that's like the, that's like flow. When you don't care the mm-hmm. result, you're just going to let it fly regardless. Cause I wasn't playing. So what do I have to lose? And that's, mm-hmm. I think that's, the mentality that we have to have even when we are playing but um yeah we ended up coming back winning that game in overtime and I think I ended with like 18 points in like 12 minutes or whatever I mean for a redshirt freshman I was stoked for that yeah um and yeah man so that that game kind of helped me internally and you've kind of been become a mental health advocate on Mm -hmm. your on your social media pages um just talk about how, why you've wanted to use your platform as that and, and what inspired it. Um, you know, I definitely dealt with my anxiety and, mm-hmm. and certain things throughout my journey in college. And you know, those little those little insights always, you know, help tune me back in, you know, when I'm right. not feeling right. And what was the motivation to, to tap into that and, and why do you keep doing it? It's weird, bro. So I think it really happened um, when I was in France or I was in Italy my first year overseas. So you have a lot of alone time uh, when you're overseas. My wife wasn't with me at the time. Um, she came over for a little bit, but I really started getting into meditation because my mom uh, introduced me to a sports psychologist. Um, I think it was after my first year or second year, I can't remember. But at the time I was like, I don't really, I'm not really into the whole psychology. Like I'm fine, I'm not crazy, yada, mm-hmm. yada, yada. Um, so that really opened my eyes to meditation. I ended up going to him um, like three or four sessions and I kind of liked it. I mean, it was an extra. It was it was um, it was like something extra to add to my game that mm-hmm. wasn't necessarily physical, um, but it was mental. And anytime I can get the upper hand on somebody or people, then you know I'll I'll try to get the upper hand. So I feel like that was the opportunity um, to do so. I mean, not a lot of people, sports people. I don't think and now more than ever. I think yes, but back then, like it wasn't really a thing to meditate, or uh, at least it wasn't talked about openly. That's mm-hmm. why. I'm um, trying to bring awareness to that because I think it's okay to talk about, you know, mental health and, and sports especially, but life too. Um, everybody goes through something, and not a lot of people talk about it because from the outside looking in, you think everybody's life is, oh, they're Instagram, they're this, they're mm-hmm. that, but there's more to that. Um, so I just want to shed light on that um, and have a, and make it so people are okay talking about that. Um, I think that's important, and I think that could – help people in the long run whatever their profession is I feel like uh, mental health if you're happy mentally I feel like you can achieve pretty much whatever your goal is talk about your stance on meditation a little bit Um, as I practice meditation I I obviously was in the beginning I was trying to use it as a tool to fix something and change things but just you know talk about the paradoxical nature and and what you've experienced with that so it was weird bro like I first started meditating like a couple years ago two or three years ago and it was kind of like I didn't like it at first because I was starting to realize um, you know, thoughts that you would have during a game or during mm. a practice. It's like, oh my God, like, am I actually thinking that yeah. right now? And it's kind of like a weird, like, oh wait, I was kind of better off without meditating because exactly. I wasn't really like aware of what I was thinking. It was just kind of like, oh yeah, like I'm thinking that. It wasn't like a, there wasn't a center. Yeah. Um, but now like if I can, I can like see my thoughts, it's weird. Like I can see my thoughts and if I'm going down the wrong track, like I can, mm. I can get back center easier than I could back in the day. Um, sometimes, I mean, you know, you have those days where you just are just like, your mind just feels like a fog. I mean, it just happens, but I feel like the quicker you can get back to center and realize that your thoughts are taking you down the wrong path. I think that's the, that's the end goal. I don't think there's like a special recipe to meditation. Everybody's journey is different, like you said. Um, but for me, it's like when I first started meditating, like I said, it was like, oh my gosh, like I'm thinking some like, whoa, like, yeah. that's not right. And I shouldn't be thinking this during the game or like miss a free throw, like, oh my God, I got to make the next one. Like, yeah. That's not healthy for me. So now like I, I can realize what I'm thinking and when I'm going down that wrong path and center myself quicker. Yeah, I think I think what I didn't realize for a long time, it's really just becoming conscious of those reactions and habits yes. and, and almost just laughing at them. You know, I, I've started this new thing where I don't look at my phone for the first hour of the day, and I, I sense these urges and certain things. Yes. And I just, instead of fighting them, I just really trust that process and just 
you know, hey, this is this is something to laugh at. You know, right. it's something that's going to pass. And I think the same thing in games. Right. You know, when I'm 0 for 3, it's like, oh, i got to hit this next one. Like, right. I don't necessarily have to hit this next one. But, no, but that's the thoughts that come exactly, in your mind, bro. Yeah. Exactly. 100%. Yeah, I just think keeping that posture towards confidence like you were talking about is huge in that and not necessarily trying to fight it or control it, but mm-hmm. just knowing everything's going to work out in the end and having right. that faith. What do I think about to get back to center? And it's like, you know, I've tried to think about my breath. I know people say that that's what makes you center. Mm. But it's like if you're thinking about your breath and then you're like, okay, am I doing it? Am I doing it? It's like that doesn't work. I mean, so for me, I'm like a visual learner. So, like, I know I'm centered when I can – if I'm thinking things that are crazy, like I just look at my thoughts kind of like on a platform. Mm. And it's like your thoughts want to latch you. They want you to grab them and, like, go down that dark path. So, like, for me, it's like I look at them, see them for what they are, just thoughts, bro, and I just let them pass. Like, your, your body knows how to get to center. It's mm-hmm. just your mind that's, that's not always there. Uh, I read a quote that was like, your body's always present, bro. Yeah. yeah. It has no choice but to be present, but your mind's not. So, like, I kind of use that visual, like, I can see my thoughts, and I don't have to grab them and latch onto them. If I, don't, if I know that's taking me down a dark place, like, thoughts I don't want to think about. That's that's the key to me, bro, and I think that's what helps. I think that's – but that's one thing we, we should dive in a little deeper, though, because you, you talked about that's a thought I don't want to go down the path. Right. Like, a lot of people think it's like, oh, get rid of it, follow the breath. Right. But you, then you talked about, you know, just letting it go. It'll leave by itself. It will. If you're really just present with it, go into that process of, of what you really experience when you feel that. So it's like I've known now that if I follow the, if I follow a thought I don't want to think about, like during a game, because mm. we're talking about hoops, say, like – missing the next shot if yeah. i'm following that thought and that's all i'm thinking about like holy crap yeah i mean you're down you're just down the wrong path um but like if i can take that and i know it's just a thought it's any thought is just a thought good or bad it's how you interpret it that mm. makes it good or bad mm-hmm. so i mean if i can just take a thought as a thought and not really make it bigger than what it is i feel like you'll naturally come to a place of flow you can't force flow and you can't force thoughts to go away because the more you resist it the more it persists, right? Exactly, yeah. So for me, it's like, okay, I know I, I know it'll pass. Like you say, let go. Mm-hmm. And um, you don't really need to dive into every single thought. You talked about, you know, not necessarily having like a way to practice. And I think that's, as I've developed my practice, that's what I've understood too. It's like, you don't necessarily have something you tune into. It's just no. whatever's there, you experience it for what it is and it'll pass, whatever it is, you know, right. it, you just don't, you're learning how to just experience life instead of react to it. Right. But just talk about that, what you understood, that it's not necessarily like you do this every time, you do this every time, right. because if you if you have that mentality, it's almost like you are forcing a result right. versus just experiencing what's there. So I guess go into your experience with that. Yeah, man, so it's interesting to me, like I like talking to people about their flow and because it's like it can be completely different to yours, yeah. but it works for them. Um, I feel like meditating and that journey is what works for you not every everybody's the same yeah. um, regards to like their center their, your center might be different than my center mm-hmm. everybody's thoughts are different um, but I feel like once once you're aware that you will come to a state of peace and flow um, if you don't latch on to everything like for me if I don't latch on to all these different thoughts because I'm aware of them there was an analogy it was like it's like cars passing by and you're just trying to be the yeah. the observer of the cars. Mm. I mean, good or bad. Like, yeah, um, when you're thinking of good thoughts, I mean, you know, it's it's good for your inner self. I mean, the belief, the faith, you have to have good thoughts. I mm-hmm. mean, but I don't think you, – you're not only going to think positive thoughts because you start thinking like that. It's like when a negative one comes, like, are you scared of it? Like, what is yeah. it? Like, I'm just – I try to get in a place where it's like good or bad. I don't try to latch on to much, but, I mean, you do want to have – good self-talk positive self-talk like during a game like everything's okay like you're fine breath like sometimes the breath will bring me to that in a game like Mm -hmm. i'll just be like deep breath okay i'm back center um but i try not to latch on to everything man and just kind of let things happen because we don't really even know where thoughts come from too that's that's part of it like fact where is it coming from so it's like why am i even taking it so seriously like 100 could be coming from someone else it could be coming from my phone but yes you don't know what bro so it's just being i think awareness is key yeah um the root of this all is being aware and when you see yourself going down the wrong path being able to snap out of it quick yeah that's beautiful man um and then one thing that stood out a ton from your other podcast was you talked about you know when your mom introduced you to the sports psychologist you're like 
don't need a therapist. Like, I'm not right. crazy. I, after I heard that, I was like, dude, I, I'm the exact same way. I, I'm like, I'm not crazy. I, why would I go talk to someone, you know? Right. Um, but just talk about how comical that is and, and just how much benefit you can get from just speaking to someone, even if it's just about something small. It is, bro. I mean, my mom was looking at it from a different perspective and trying to help me and give me mm-hmm. inner tools. But I didn't see it like that. I saw it as like, no, 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 like offensive. Like, I'm, yeah. I don't need that. Um, I think that's why I like talking about it so much because I feel, I think there's a lot of people out there that struggle with, you know, different things. Not like I don't have necessarily anxiety or things like that, but yeah. it's just being aware of your thoughts and trying to get yourself on the right path to be the best you could possibly be. So, mm. um, you know, looking back on that now, it is funny that I that's how like not immature, but how much I didn't know. Yeah. Um, that it would help me in the long run and it's it's helped me tremendously bro like meditation is an everyday journey and there's not really an end goal um every day is something new i mean yeah. you have thoughts come in your head that you'd be like oh god like where'd that go from yeah but then, you know like you said just let it pass and, you yeah. know you'll get back to center that way one stance i've really tried to take is just be grateful for it and, yes. and understand that you know when i am grateful i'm not like I'm not looking at life as a threat. I'm not looking right. at that thought as a threat or that experience as a threat, but just as something new to to go through. And, right. and I know that if I if I stay true to it to myself, you know, it'll pass and I'll grow from it. 100%. And I think in the, in the past, you know, I tried to fight it, and yeah, no, it's not bro. supposed to be me. And I think that's where I got caught up, and I think a lot of people do. So you know, just encouraging people to tap into that, really see what they're thinking and what they're, how they're experiencing life is huge. And right, bro. I you just being a, an advocate for it is really cool. I think a lot of it's like our ego. It's like, mm. you know, we start thinking that we have to be a certain way or act a certain way. It's like, just be you. Like, yeah. I feel like our ego takes a lot of that sometimes. And that's what I try to work on every single day is try not to have that ego. Yeah. Um, I mean, we are human. I mean, it comes up, but um, being aware of that. Yeah, that's awesome, man. And so we've, we've hovered around flow a little bit. We've talked yeah. about it. But, you know, I feel like everybody's, like you said, is so unique in how they tap into it, how they experience it. And, you know, for a long time, I, you know, I was trying to figure out what my flow was, you right. know, and I tried to, you know, study all these books. But I, I finally understood, you know, it's it's different for everybody. It's unique to me and, and what tunes me in. Mm-hmm. So what would it be for you if you had, like, to, to put it down in one or two sentences, how you would communicate what flow is um mm. and how you would uh you know ex- say you would experience it bro that's a deep question uh, one or two cents i think flow for me is um it's funny because my wife would be like I'll, i'd warm up during games and she'll be like you're so kind of methodical mm. when i warm up because i'm not like a hoorah type guy um so like i listen to like Beethoven during, <laughs> in the locker room before a game or something like that like something that just I think my flow is a calm peaceful state yeah um kind of like a silent killer I'm not a big um like I said hoorah kind of guy and I need to listen to pump up music before a game so to sum it up I think it's just a calm peaceful state um knowing that everything's gonna work out mm. and um, I think um like Beethoven and mu- like calm music before games kind of helps me tap into my flow um, which is kind of weird, but that and some Bruno Mars, and I'm pretty much flowing <laughs> for the game, bro. That's nice. Yeah. You talked about flowing for a game. What's you know you've had so many big games in your career. Mm-hmm. One of last year, 55 points. You had you know a bunch in college. I saw on the sideline to see 40 plus. You know what's one game though in your whole career? It could be in high school, it could be college or pro. You know what's one game you felt like that was my deepest performance of if flow and, and peak yeah it happened it happened last year bro that it was actually 58 when oh 58 you, my fault can, i'm just <laughs> it, it's all good though it was weird like there was different stat sheets that say 55 58 i'm like okay whatever i just go with let's the just go number. 60 yeah let's 60 round ball, it up. whatever <laughs> but i think that game is where i tapped into my flow um just to an extreme i told this story before like my boy dusty hannis before the game i was like we were warming up and you know when some of the rims like yeah. the shooters know if a rim's yeah. a shooter's rim or not right yeah. so we were warming up that game, and I'm like, bro, these rims are different. Like, these are elite shooting rims. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, bro, like, they're nice. <laughs> so th- I think that started, like, the tap in, like, okay, like, I feel like this ball is about to go in every time I shoot it, like, hula hoop. Um, <laughs> and then the game started, bro, and I think I came out the gate, like, 15, sh- like, straight points. And I'm like, I didn't really think about it. Because, you know, if you think about flow, yeah. like, I'm instantly out of it if I start thinking about yeah. it. So. I look up at halftime, I have 29, I'm like, oh, this is crazy. Yeah. Um, I didn't have a 30 ball up until that point this year, so I'm like, oh, I mean, like, 
30, my ego is like, oh, 30 is cool. Like, you've had a great game so yeah. far. But, like, inner, my inner me, like, my peaceful state is not even thinking about that. Because I think the more you think mm. about scoring, I think the harder it is. So, like, I really wasn't worried about the points. Um, like, my boy told me I looked possessed during the game. Like, he actually was like, bro, like, I didn't want to touch you, talk to you. Like, you look <laughs> like you're in a different state. And I'm like, bro, like, I felt like not possessed, but you feel like you're in that flow where you're just literally out there just moving mm. to whatever's happening. And the ball somehow finding me. Um, so, like, I look up at the end of the game, it said 58. I'm like, holy crap, I didn't even know I had that much, bro. Like, I, I didn't think about it because if I think about it, I know it's like, okay, like, so I can't look at my stat sheet, like, during mm-hmm. the – I don't even look at stats. I don't even look at my stats all year, bro. Like, I'm weird oh, about that. That's cool. Like, my my wife would be like, oh, like, do you want to know this, that? I'm like, no, I, I never want to know my stats. I feel like the yeah. numbers kind of – like inhibit your mm. your mind like I don't know bro I'm weird about that stuff I don't like knowing I just know what I what I'm doing in that game um or that season I know I know internally how I'm playing yeah I don't need to know the numbers I feel like numbers ruin everything so I mean that game was my deepest flow for sure bro like I think it was like 19 for 25 or 26 something like that but like I didn't even think about that yeah I was just out there playing so I think I hit the deepest flow I've ever hit this year so when you have an experience like that, it's almost, you know, like we talked about the next time you're like, oh, I want to force, I want to feel that right. again. So like what, you know, I think the getting in those experiences help build that motivation to tap yes. into it, but really to tap into it, you have to understand yourself more. So like after you experienced that, what was your process to kind of, you know, let it go and, and also yeah, tap bro. back into it again? That's a great way to you, like letting it go. Like mm. you said, I mean, a lot of guys go from that high and then the next game they'll have like two points four yeah. points um like my ego like i said was like oh my god you got to go out there and kill the next game right like yeah but being aware of that mm. now um that didn't bother me back then if mm. i had a game like that i'd be like oh my god like all this pressure's on me next game to score like a lot everybody's looking at you now yeah but like bro like the next we played a game two days later and honestly i totally just Wash that game away like it was over. Like in the scout, like my coach would be like, you know, they're gonna key on. I'm like, nah, but like it's just a different. Game. It's yeah. another, it's a whole other game. And I mean, that next game had another great game, but I didn't even didn't even try, bro. Like you try, but it's like that inner confidence, right? Yeah. So I wasn't, I didn't feel any pressure to go out there and do something. I like a 58 ball again. Like I wasn't feeling any kind of pressure like that, bro. I was just dropping into my zone, and whatever happened was gonna happen, and. I was just going to be present enough to give myself the best opportunity to play well. Yeah, I talked to uh, Jeremy Tawa a little bit about this, but um, I know you, Bob, and, and Jeremy were talking about having no cap. Once, If you have a goal of like 20 points and mm-hmm. you get in the first half, half like you talked about in your 58-point game, right. you know, are you done? And, right. and so that's, that hit me. You know, I've been yeah. in that where I'm like, oh, you know, I've, hit, I've hit my – my quota for threes, you know, I'm Facts, good. Bro. But I'm like, why would I think that way? Why wouldn't I keep going? So just talk about your awareness of that and how that developed and, and how you see it helping you professionally. Yeah, bro. So, like, I'm all I'm all for goal setting and having goals. Um, I necessarily don't have, like, a chart and have goals for the year. Mm. Uh, I feel like if I do that and I hit it, like you said, then what? So, yeah. like, during the year, you know, like that game in particular, um, I feel like old me would have been like, okay, like, oh, you've had a great game. Like, let's not ruin the shooting percentages. Yeah. Like, maybe I wouldn't know I was thinking that back then, but, like, yeah. that's probably what I was going to be mm. thinking. But I walked into the locker room like, Psh, like, whatever. I can go out 0 for 10 the next second half, but I'm still going to take the shots I was taking yeah. and drop into that flow. Um, I think it just goes with um, awareness of your thoughts, like we talked about, and just kind of letting it go. Um, like, no cap. I mean, don't don't give yourself a limit because when you hit that limit, it's like oh, you, I think like internally you're like, oh, okay, like I'm good for the day. Yeah. Like yeah, okay, phew, I had a great game. Let's just let that one go. Like no, I want not necessarily more. Like ego, yeah. I don't want more, but like I know I got more in me. Mm. You know what I mean? So, yeah. Um, I think it's being aware of the thoughts and just not capping yourself. And we kind of talked about this a little bit before, but how do you see flow translating off the court? Um, and and I think. As you've learned, you know, rest is such a huge part mm-hmm. of, of being a professional athlete um, and really tuning in for the next game, you know, and, and for the right. next practice. And I think that's how, you know, players separate themselves. But how do you see that practice really allowing you to, to relax your mind off the court? And, and what, what are some things you do off the court to take your mind and, and body away from the game? So it's funny, bro. Like, even in college, I would hate rest. Like, mm. I didn't want time off. 
because I felt like if I wasn't working, someone else was outworking me. Yeah. But as I got older, um, I feel like sometimes you need that mental reset mm. um, and let your body kind of take it all in. And sometimes you even level up when you take a rest. Yeah. You know I mean, your body kind of resets and you come back a better player. But I just learned that recently. It was always hard for me to take rest. Like, I just recently went on my honeymoon and, you know, I was telling one of my boys this, like, it took me like a day or two to like kind of just mm. just relax. Um, it's hard. I mean, I'm sure you've been there. You're a hard worker. Like, you know, it's hard to kind of just let mm-hmm. go of working out and then kind of just enjoying where you're at. Um, but I feel like as I gotten older, um, rest is key. And Bob was a big emphasis on that, too. Like, like, it's OK to relax and, um, you know, work other things. You don't have to, like, kill yourself every day. Yeah. Um, Because in the long run, that might make you get hurt or something like that. But I think as I matured, I think that's been the biggest key for me. And this life off the court, like, I have a beautiful wife and we have a great life. Like, it's just being, if I know, if I'm in a happy mental state, I know then that's, you know, that's good for everybody around me. Mm -hmm. Like, if I have a bad game and I come home pissed, I mean, who wants to be around that? Um, So it took me a while to really let the game or, you know, be what it was, good or bad, and come home just like, try to be the same person I was when I left the house and yeah. not, not linger on to things and let things drag me down, good or bad. We talked about social media a little bit and just external pressures and, and part mm-hmm. of flow is autonomy and doing it for the act itself. You know, I just think what's so cool about your story, bro, is is you grinded so hard when nobody nobody even expected anything from you. Right. But you, you had this internal belief that, you know, that journey was worth it no matter what. And I, I think I even struggle sometimes now as I've, you know, kind of tapered off of hoop. And it's like the next thing, it doesn't necessarily need to be at the level that I was at hoop mm-hmm. right off the bat. You know, I can restart that journey. And that's what I've learned from basketball. But let's talk about, you know, how you've been able to balance social media as you become a professional, not to rush that process, but also just in everyday life and, and other things like that. Yeah, bro. I mean, I think people look at social media and think we're like not human per se like I'm not even a big name on social media but like I'll get people asking me questions and I don't mind answering them because like I'm just a normal human being like you Mm -hmm. bro like who am I to judge you I'm not better than you yeah Um, I just have a different platform than you so I mean I use my social media to kind of like push out you know inspirational things sometimes Um, you know I have family photos up there whatever but um, I think social media can be a good thing I mean it gets talked about a lot um, now because people are just judging everybody on social media but I've kind of just let that go like I'm going to put up what I want to put up on my social media and you know if you don't like what I put up I mean you don't have to follow me that's the beauty of social media mm. you can click on follow right away um, so I mean I don't I don't necessarily fear being judged um, I know how I want to live my life and what makes me happy so I mean if someone wants to judge me I mean I think that says more about them and where they're at in their personal mm. state their flow state than it does about me so yeah um, you know, like I, we talked about earlier, I think social media can be a good thing um, and not necessarily have to be a bad thing where um, everybody's just criticizing on there and has an opinion. So You've started a brand. You know, I wore it, uh, you know, repping a little yes, bit. Yes, sir, bro. Love appreciate brand. that. Uh, just talk about the, the motivation to start it and, and how it's going. Yeah, bro. So um, it was like last year. Um, I got people were like hey man like so you know everybody when you're having a good year they're like oh you're gonna get called up oh you're gonna be NBA yada 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 I'm like nah man I'm just living in the moment um so after after that year I came back um so my foot was broken so I had a lot of time just to I don't know you know how thoughts go when your foot's broken you can't even hoop yeah um so I was like I had this idea I'm like let me just get like a location pin drop like where you're at and I'm like the moment after it so I went to the mall and got it made and like People started hitting me like, oh, where'd you get that, bro? Like, I'm like, I just made it myself. <laughs> um, so, like, the, it's in the works right now. I kind of want to do things with, like, charities and stuff with it. Mm. Um, there's a lot I want to do with it. Um, but I wanted to see how people respond to it first just to get an insight on, you know, if people like it. And not a lot of people understand it. Like, you get it because it's like you're tapped into a different realm. Like, the moment is the only place we can live, bro. Mm. Like, we can't live in the past. Yeah. And we, we don't know our future. But we can be here now, like, 100%. Like, I'm in this conversation 100%. Yeah. Like, I'm not anywhere else. Uh, I think that's my motivation behind it. And there's a lot I want to do with it, um, you know, like I said, with charities and things like that. But I think it's just a way of life is to just try to live in the moment. And that's that's where we can be our best. So then I guess just a goal that you have for yourself moving forward. Um, I know you've been grinding away. Mm-hmm. You were in the G League last year. Mm-hmm. You've been overseas. Now you're going back overseas. Mm-hmm. Maybe what are some challenges that you have 
just internally that you know you, you don't really care about obviously the end result as much mm-hmm. but what are some internal challenges that just for you like your mission that you're tuning into as you as you go on to you know Germany next year yeah bro so I mean like we said um, everybody battles with you know having peace with what they're doing mm-hmm. um, so for me my goal is obviously the NBA I mean that's been my goal since I was a kid um, but you know I kind of have to you have to take your own medicine sometime and really say okay it's a journey um, I feel like I'll be in the NBA one day I just don't know when yeah and that's kind of like the realization of you know it's a different kind of flow like being at ease with what's happening because you can't control everything right uh, I may feel a certain way and I mean it's just being okay with what what currently is going on so like I'm excited for Germany man um, I feel like that's the next step in my life and I feel like I'm always going to be where I'm supposed to be and I think I'm supposed to be there um, but the end goal um, even though I'm not goal setting, is to play in the NBA. Mm-hmm. Um, but even if that doesn't happen, I mean, you you have to just take take whatever it is. I mean, I can sit here now and be at peace with where I'm going, um, knowing that I gave you know my best chance to be in the NBA, and it just didn't work out right now. But I have another great opportunity to be my best player I can in Germany, and that's what I'm going to be. I'm going to give my full self where I'm at, and um, we're going to just go from there. Each, each guest I bring on just. I ask them to come up with one challenge that they have for the viewers. Maybe some big, it could be small, it could be, you know, anything. But just some some challenge that you have, and then you know, final words of advice and some wisdom that you've learned along your journey. Hmm. One challenge. Um, I would challenge people to really, if they haven't started meditating, maybe just give it a give it a try. Um, even like two minutes a day. I feel like that could change a lot of people's lives. I mean. I don't know. It could not. But, I mean, it doesn't hurt to try Mm -hmm. um, because that's helped me tremendously. And what was the second question? Some words of advice that you have. Words of advice. Um, Someone's journey. I will say never give up on your dream. Um, Anything's possible for me. Like I said, I'm spiritual. Anything's possible for me. I know I got God on my side. I know he's going to put me in the position to where I'm – he's going to put me where I'm supposed to be. Um, But I just say, you know, don't give in to – to giving up, there's going to be times um, that you feel like quitting. I read a quote on Twitter that was like, you're going to go through every emotion trying to reach mm-hmm. your goal. There's going to be days you're happy. There's going to be days you're like, godly, like, is this worth it? And then there's going to be the next day, like, okay, yeah, it's worth it. Like, you're going to literally go through every emotion on your journey. Um, but just to stay consistent and find that center where you know that, you know, you're unbreakable and you can get through anything. That's beautiful, man. Well, that's Tyler Harvey. Thank you for coming on, bro. Really yes, sir, appreciate bro. it. I know appreciate you're a busy it, guy. You know, people can follow you at T Raw with the uh, three A's. T Raw. <laughs> but yeah, thank you for coming on, bro, and uh, really appreciate it. And look forward to following you in Germany. Appreciate it, brother. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. I wanted to give another quick shout out to my sponsor, MindSport. MindSport is a meditation app made specifically for athletes. If you want to improve your performance on and off the court, lower your stress levels, learn the foundations of meditation and yoga, and improve your quality of sleep, this app is for you. Make sure to give it a download in the iTunes App Store, and we'll see you in the next video.